Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to the channel. Gurhawk here, your casual gamer dad, coming at you with yet another Final Fantasy XIV video. Now, my previous XIV video uh, regarding just my overall review and impressions of Endwalker, uh, I didn't get any comments on it, but it got a lot of views. Well, for me, it got a lot of views. So I decided I'm going to do something a little... Uh, a little crazy. I'm going to keep doing 14 content um, in the form of giving small reviews of the jobs that I get to level 90. So just kind of giving my thoughts and comparisons into previous expansions and if they're fun, aren't they fun, that sort of stuff. Um, so being the first video, this one will be a little bit longer than the other ones because they'll be pretty short videos because I'm not going to go too in-depth with them. I'm going to try not to anyway. But um. I, uh, yeah, you know, the, the setup of the video is basically, you know, I'll start just by giving my overall impression and opinion on the class at 90. Um, I will then go on to kind of showing off or just going over some of the new goodies that they got and then some of the older stuff that got changed or like reworked or whatever, things like that. That's going to be basically how I go. And then just summarying it all up with is the job fun or is it not fun? You know what is what is my opinion on it so that's basically what the setup is going to be now if you guys spoiled yourself by looking at the title of the video which you probably did because you got to look at the title to know what this is about you're going to know that i'm reviewing a job that i'm not on right now currently now everyone who knows me when it comes to final fantasy knows i will simp hard for warrior because warrior is my favorite job it's been my main role my main job since a realm were born and will continue to be so for however long Final Fantasy XIV is alive. That being said, today, I'm changing it up, and I'm going to give a review on my second favorite job, and my primary DPS role, and that is the Monk. That's right. We're going with the Brawler. Wah! Crazy kicks, yes. So, a little background about Monk and me. Monk is... And has been basically my primary DPS job of choice since a Realm Reborn. So I'm as much a veteran on Monk as I am on Warrior. Um, if like someone says like, hey, we need you in a group, but all tank roles are filled. Can you come in as a DPS? This is the first role I spit at him. I'm like, hey, I'll come in as Monk. I'll punch things. And they go, okay, sure. And then usually it's cool and that's it. Um, so I just got this job to level 90 just the other day. And my overall review of it at level 90, you know, and I, I did a couple dungeons, I did a raid, um, normal, obviously. Uh, my overall thoughts on it at level 90 is it's fun. It's good, it's good, it's a good job. I like it. Um, I'll get slightly more in depth on what happened with Monk compared to previous expansions versus this expansion, but it's definitely different from what it was back in Shadowbringers and Stormblood. And Heaven's Ward. And Rumor Born. But um I enjoy it. It will continue for now. It will continue to be my job of choice for melee DPS. You know, we'll see what happens when I level Reaper, but you know, this is it's still still number one in my my opinion. Great single target, great AoE, you know, it's not you know the best by far, but it doesn't have to be because it's still fun. It's fast paced, it flows really smooth. That's huge for me. If like the combos or the skills feel janky, if you're like all over the place with them, like right now for me, Reaper feels kind of janky. I know I haven't played it hardly at all, but you know, Monk just flows it's like a nice, it's like that, it's like that waterfall in the background, nice and smooth, smooth flow for me. And uh, the combo system, like I'm very familiar with it, so it's nice. Um, definitely definitely dps job of my choice i enjoy it you know 10 out of 10 for me um so let's go over some of the goodies that you get leveling up now it's going to be a little confusing because of the way they have it all laid out but basically starting at 82 we get our first ability this is this is going to be kind of a weird explanation for this job because theoretically i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right now monk by the time you're a level 80 monk, you have your entire kit. You have your entire kit. From 80, 81 
to 90, nothing is going to change. Your rotation is going to stay the same. Your AoE is going to stay the same. Your buff usage is going to stay the same. Your every Everything is going to stay the same. Every single thing that we get is more of an upgrade than it is an actual ability. So for instance, you'll see at 82 we get Shadow of the Story, which is that cool. That cool kick move we just saw. Um, at 86 we get Rising Phoenix, and at 90 we get Phantom Rush. Now, the important thing is you pay attention to our traits leveling up. So far, and I know I haven't leveled up all the roles yet, all the jobs yet, but so far this is the only job I've seen that gets a fucking trait every two levels. Because all of the abilities that we earn as we level up are just upgrades to what we already have. So you'll see Arm of the Destroyer Mastery. So when we hit 82, we don't actually get Shadow of the Destroyer. Instead, it takes Arm of the Destroyer and it upgrades it to Shadow of the Destroyer. So it, ba it basically just gives it a new... You know, like, Arm of the Destroyer, it's just, you know, 110 potency, an Opo Opo stance, uh, point blank AoE. Uh, when it upgrades, it's 110 potency, point blank AoE, uh, but as long as you're an Opo Opo stance, you guarantee a critical hit. Oh, okay, slight change, but same functionality, same usage. Um, at 84, we get Enhanced Thunderclap, that's fine, we get another charge for our mobility skill, which, you know, Thunderclap. Huge upgrade over Shoulder Tackle, in my opinion. I love the mobility I get with it. Uh, and Melee Mastery, which I, th I, mean, I think everybody gets a Mastery now, so it's just potency. It's just padding, damage padding. Um, level 86, we get Flint Strike Mastery, so again, you take this ability here, Flint Strike, and it upgrades it to this, Rising Phoenix. It, this is literally just a potency upgrade. And, you know, of course, animation. You get a much cooler animation, so what's that? Uh, 88 Enhanced Brotherhood makes it so... This one's actually a pretty good trait. Um, every time you pop Brotherhood, you are guaranteed to open a Chakra. Every time you slap a weapon skill. Straight up. So it's not even like based on like a chance anymore. It's You just get one. And then level 90, we get Tornado Kick Mastery, which again, another upgrade, it takes Tornado Kick, and it upgrades it to our ultimate ability, Phantom Rush, which is a 1,000 potency single target slash AoE ability. Fucking good shit. Uh, so now we're going to, you know, that's all the new stuff we got. New stuff we got. Let's go into old things that changed with the monk. And again, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it because this isn't like, this isn't a monk guide. So I'm not going to go into the lore and everything that changed. But the biggest changes that happened, because Monk did get a pretty good rework in Endwalker. Not as big as Summoner, I don't think, but still pretty big. So we'll start We'll start with Shadowbringers. At the end of Shadowbringers, Monks, monks were in a weird position, because they, they removed a lot of stuff. They had us operating with our Fist Forms still, which, if anyone remembers, you know, we used to have, you know, Fist of Earth, Fist of Fire, and Fist of Wind. Uh, Fist of Wind gave us an extra stack of Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning used to be a stackable buff that increased our damage and attack speed. Um, having that fourth stack gave us more damage over sitting in Fist of Fire. Uh, and they got rid of... They got rid of that. They got rid of Grease Lightning and they made it a trait now. Which, okay. I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with Grease Lightning being a trait. I do miss my swirly lightning bolts all over my body. Well, that's fine. That's, that's a minor inconvenience. Um, they also got rid of, as you can see, they got rid of our fists. They got rid of our fists. No more stances, man. Stances are gone. See you later. So no more fists of fire. No more fists of earth. Which, kind of a shame. I did like fists of earth. It, it allowed Muck to tank a little bit with uh, Riddle Earth active. But um, it's fine. It's, it's minuscule. It's minor. It's all good. It's just flavor. Um, and then the other big thing is our positionals. So from A Realm Reborn all the way up to Shadowbringers, monks were very well known for being the only melee DPS role that had the most positionals. We had six positionals, minimal. We had a flank combo, which was uh, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, and Snap Punch. And then we had a uh, from the rear combo, which was Boot Shine. True Strike, and Demolish. Well, all those positionals, except for two, are Gonzo. 
they're just they're out of here see you later have a nice day so dragon kick boot shine twin snakes and true strike can all be done from wherever the fuck you want doesn't matter where you're facing you can be in front of the boss and you'll get the full effects of all of them only demolish and snap punch need to be performed from their respective per position also demolish from the rear snap punch from the flank everything else can be done wherever you want it to be uh, you know i i like it it doesn't mean i follow it i still do my positionals this is going to be a hard habit to break for veteran monk players like there's no downside to still performing the positionals as they were there really isn't um but, you know, it's going to be hard to get used to the idea that, you know, now there's no downside from not performing your positional if it's not Demolish or Snap Punch. So it'll, it'll take a while, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Another thing that they did was they they got rid of uh, pretty much all of our uh, off-global cooldowns uh, that aren't like buffs. So obviously Brotherhood is still there. Uh, Riddle of Fire is still there. We have a new Riddle. Riddle of Wind. Uh, which reduces auto attack delay, so it just, you know, it just makes us punch faster. You know, it doesn't do anything for skills, but it makes us auto attack faster, so I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, and Riddle of Earth is still the same. Uh, so these OGCDs are all, like, these are all buffs, these are all still the same. Um, meditation still gives us five chakras when we're out of combat, one chakra when we're in combat. Uh, it gives us access to Forbidden Chakra, as well as Enlightenment. So Enlightenment and forbidden chakra we've gotten in previous expansions those have not changed those are still there so every time you get five chakras you get an og cd that you can smack somebody with you know forbidden chakra single target enlightenment when it's aoe whatever but the the big thing is they took all of those og cds like elixir field still in the game and tornado kick obviously still in the game of course now that i'm level 90 they're phoenix or uh, rising phoenix and phantom rush as well as a third one flint strike these are all um, OGCDs that are locked behind the new mechanic of, uh, was it Beast Mas Masterful Blists, which requires us to use Beast Chakra. Beast Chakra is now generated with the new Perfect Balance. Now, PB can only be activated in combat now, and we get three stacks when we pop it. So you have two charges. When you pop one, you get three stacks, and you're going to get a Beast Chakra depending on what what abilities you use and depending on what beast chakras you got you'll be allowed to use one of these three abilities here or you know one of these these three here sorry i keep pointing the wrong ones these three here or is it no elixir field rising phoenix and phantom Rush. sorry <laughs> sorry so basically uh, the way it works is you gotta you gotta read the tools here for Masterful Bliss. So if you have three of one B chakra, you can use Elixir Field. If you have three of different type B chakras, you will be able to use Rising Phoenix. Um, if you have two of the same type of B chakra and then one different one, you'll get access to this ability, Celestial Revolution, which is our oops button. And by oops button, I mean it's not as strong as the rest of these abilities, but it's still going to allow us to get into the second part of this mechanic, which is opening either our solar or lunar nadi. So you'll either get a sun or a moon. And basically when you use elixir field, you get, was it lunar? Yeah, you get, you get the moon. You open the moon when you use elixir. You open the sun when you use phoenix. When you have both the sun and the moon open and you charge up three more b chakra with those two open you will now gain access to phantom rush your biggest hit that's a lot that's a lot to get fucking used to it's new it sounded so complicated when i first picked it up in endwalker and just getting used to all the new stuff was like <sighs> blew my mind but as soon as i got used to it it started flowing nice and it feels good so my honest opinion on these abilities at first, I was kind of, I was kind of bitter. I was a little like not happy with the way they did it. I was like, we don't get anything new. In in theory, we just get skills that we got leveling up. That just get upgraded to different animations and more potency. Ooh, whoop de doo, right? Like that's fun. But it, the more I think about it, and the more I look at it, 
it's actually a good thing. And the reason why it's a good thing is because it prevents button bloat and crowded hotbars. We don't have to worry about all that. And it avoids messing up any anything with the rotation. Like it makes our rotation continue to be smooth and on the same line. You know, sometimes you get new abilities and now you're like, well, this is where my rotation was, but now I got this new ability, so now I gotta go like here and then back and then down here and back. Like, you know what I mean? So it, it, it I actually like it. I like design. It ended up being better than at first when I was like, oh, this is gonna be awful. And this has been like chef's kiss chef's kiss two skills i do want to touch on before i move on to the end of this is uh anatomy this is still in the game this is the same thing it's been extends the duration of discipline fish which is now your twin snakes buff and maintains your form that you're currently in i mean it's still in the game same animation you know you're like goku gohan powering up here um it's it's still the same as it used to be. It's got very niche uses. You know what I mean? And that's during boss transitions when something, you know, when your discipline fist might drop off. So basically, you know, if a boss is transitioning, your first priority is fill up your chakra. Your second priority is a not meant to keep your stance in your discipline. Uh, discipline fist. Yeah, discipline fist from falling off. That's it. That's, that's the only time you'll ever use this ability. You can use it in between trash packs. Because it is instant, so you can press it and trigger it for like a second to just refresh your buff so you can continue on doing what you're doing. But it, that's usually not a problem in dungeons, so I wouldn't really worry about it. The other ability I want to talk about is Six-Sided Star. Now again, I'm not going to go too in-depth because this isn't this isn't a monk guide. I don't even have this skill on my hotbar. I'm, I might be bad for doing it. I might be a baddie. I might be awful. But again, very niche use very niche use it does have good potency it's 550 potency instant cast but it makes all of your abilities sync up to that 3.956 recast so if you have a boss that's performing a mechanic or going into a transition phase if it's going to last four seconds you want to hit six-sided star before that transition happens so that you can get it, that slight little bit of damage gain and you won't miss out on that global cooldown hitting you otherwise it's a dps loss because even though you got that 550 potency now you can't do anything for four seconds until it's done so i, I haven't experimented with it yet maybe i will maybe i won't i don't know but that is uh that's pretty much what i got guys to follow to close this all out I mean, Monk, is it fun? Absolutely. Monk and Endwalker is fun. It's actually, it, it's as fun as it's ever been. Really, it is. And some of the animations just look cool here. I will, uh, I stopped over by the target dummy, so I can just show you the beast our chakra thing, right? So, so I don't mess this up here. I'm not going to do a full opening, but do this. Get your buff. Get more buffs. So now watch. We'll get three different color or three of the same color B chakra. Now we have elixir field, and then allows us to continue our combo if we want from any stance. So we'll just refresh that. All right, and now we'll do this. This. You see, we got three different colors now. We use Rising Phoenix. That's pretty cool. So see now you'll have you'll see we got the moon and the sun, right? So now we, we have to wait for perfect balance. So you'll do like was it two rotations? I think not even. All right, and then you got PB. Bam, boom, bam, and here it comes. Boom. Like, how cool is that? So that's that's how the beast, the beast chakra stuff works, man. It's just using PB every time it's up and just making sure you're monitoring. Do I have a sun and moon open? Do I not? That sort of thing. So, yeah, that's all I got for you tonight, guys. You know, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this review helpful if you were interested in Monk. Like, Monk is definitely very fun. 
definitely fun definitely give it a shot it's not as confusing as some people would make it seem it really isn't especially now that there's not half as many positional to worry about as there used to be so thank you again guys i will stop rambling on now i appreciate it if you like what you saw hit the thumbs up if you really want to see more from me please hit the subscribe button i would really appreciate that and i'll see you guys next video